Welcome everybody online. My name is Jeff King and you're here for Not That Complicated. Today, I'll be walking you through the wonderful world of watch face complications. Watch faces. Garmin users love watch faces. Garmin users download a lot of watch faces and on the Connect IQ store, there are thousands of fantastic examples. At Garmin, we want to continue enabling our developers to make great watch faces for our users. Today, I would like to present to you the next evolution of watch faces. Garmin users love data, and Garmin users love putting data on their watch faces. By adding watch face complications, you can transform a simple timepiece into a personalized, data-rich dashboard. Over the years, as Garmin has added new metrics available to show on watch faces, uh, this has led to expansion of APIs, modules all across the system. And as a Connect IQ developer who's creating a watch face, your only option is to scour through the documentation to see what's new, to see where things are. If you want to access weather data, step counts, heart rates, you'll have to make multiple requests to multiple modules to get all this information. Well, today, that changes. We're introducing a new generic complications framework that will serve as a one-stop shop for all metrics throughout the entire system. This will be an easily expandable framework. As Garmin adds new metrics, they will be easy to find and easy to implement into your watch faces. And I'm really excited about this part, the new framework will promote sharing by enabling Connect IQ developers to expose their own data from their applications to be used by watch face complications. The best part, you don't have to expose any of your proprietary algorithms behind this data, just the final value and information about how you want it displayed. So that sounds kind of great, right? Let's take a look at how it works. Complications data is shared between applications and watch faces using a simple publish and subscribe method. Publishers expose their data uh, and give some information about it, and subscribers listen for updates, get that data, and then display it how they see fit on their watch faces. Currently, watch apps and audio content apps are the only two app types that are allowed to publish data, and watch faces are the only type that are allowed to subscribe to data. So let's take a closer look at what it takes to subscribe to data on your watch face to access all these great pieces of data. First, this is a perfect example of our one-stop shop. There will now be an iterator that you can obtain through the Complications API that allows you to iterate through every metric on the entire system including ones exposed by other Connect IQ developers and the dozens of great ones that Garmin has created for you. Once you have this iterator, you can look at uh, the complications, get their IDs, inspect something about them, uh, and decide if that's what you want to display on your app. Save this ID so that you can then register your watch face to get updates for this complication ID. Uh, and with that, you will also create a callback function that will be called when, it, when a complication is updated. From here, let's take a look at this uh, complication uh, update callback. So this is the function we described before. Uh, you'll get the ID that has changed, and then you can go use the complications API called get complication, and you'll get back the latest data for that complication. This data is a dictionary that will have the value, units, uh, and some other information. Now, you can display this directly to your watch face, or if you choose, use this metric however you see fit. So let's take a, another cool feature uh, that is being introduced with the Watch Face Complications API is the ability to launch directly into an application from the watch face. So we are enabling touch-enabled products to long press on a watch face complication and launch directly into an app. 
This works with both native complications and Connect IQ developer complications. So when you launch into an app, we've added the on-press function to the watch face delegate. So this is what you'll use to get a click event, detect if that event happened in a complication, and then call the exit to method to launch directly into a CIQ application. Finally, when you don't want to listen to a complication update anymore or are shutting down your app, you can unsubscribe from a single complication ID or from all complication IDs, uh, and then disconnect your callback function by setting it to null. So now that you know uh, how to subscribe to your watch face to complication updates, I would like to add a new subscriber to the mix. Face it, the face that you know and love will now take full advantage of the complications framework. We know Garmin users do some pretty amazing things and take some pretty amazing photos. So if you want to include your pets, family, that group photo at the end of a marathon, right on your watch face, you're no longer limited to the few data points that are available today, but will be able to add any complication available to the complication framework, including the dozens of great native pieces of data that Garmin exposes, such as race predictor or heart rate, uh, and the countless available metrics that will be added by other Connect IQ developers. This is a great feature. We're really excited to share this with you. So that explains how to subscribe from the watch face side. Let's take a look at what it takes for a developer to expose data from their application by publishing it. Publishing a complication update works very similar to a fit contribution. Like a fit com contribution, you must declare your complication in your resources folder. So let's take a look at an example of this complications XML. A single application can have up to four complications they expose. So we've added an ID here. So inside your app, you can identify which one you want to push an update to. Uh, this is a numerical value, the ID here. And um, again, you have max four. This is, this is a great number. Uh, Moving on, uh, we have the access modifier. Um, and this, there are three levels of access when you're publishing a metric. They are public, protected, and private, pretty standard. So let's go over those in a, a little bit more deep detail right now. So if you publish as public, that makes your data available, or the complication data, available to all subscribers. This includes other Connect IQ developers, and the Faceit app. For Faceit, it will attempt to display your data how you intend, uh, just displaying the value and the units uh, with your icon. But for any other Connect IQ developers that subscribe to your complications, uh, they can take that data and use it how they see fit. So, for example, let's say you have an application that converts steps to percent distance traveled around the equator of the Earth. Face it will show that value, know that it's a percentage, uh, and display that on a watch face. But another developer might say, hey, I want to subscribe to that piece of data and then apply a modifier to it and show percent distance around the moon or Mars. Um, maybe you don't want people messing with your data like that and displaying it, you can publish as protected. This still allows Faceit, which will respect the display of your data, to uh, access and subscribe. But only Connect IQ apps with your built with your developer key will be able to access it. So you can still make your own app and access your own, you can still make your own watch face and access your own applications complications along with Faceit in the protected. For 
private, maybe you don't really care to share something with Faceit, uh, and you only want your watch faces to consume your complication data. Uh, this is a great if you have a branded watch face uh, where you want to show a portion of your proprietary data or private user data while still having the feature to launch directly into your feature-rich app by long pressing on the screen right on the watch face. So moving back to our complications XML here, we got some labels. Um, the long label uh, is a string resource, um, preferably localized translated resource. This data will be available to any subscribers. Um, and then there's the optional short label here, uh, which is a great opportunity to provide an abbreviation for your complication name. Um, as we can see on this Phoenix watch face here, around the, around the edge, we have uh, barometer and battery and heart rate that are abbreviated appropriately uh, to fit in a smaller display. Next, we have the icon. Uh, this will be a drawable bitmap resource, um, and this will be a scaled resource that'll be both used in Faceit on the mobile app when a user is selecting which complications they want on their watch face, and it'll be scaled for the device itself when it's displayed by a watch face. Um, because of this, we are requiring that this asset be an SVG vector um, so that it can be scaled properly. Uh, we know your graphics team uh, produces some amazing icons, uh, so we don't want that to get messed up when it's displayed on a mobile phone resolution or on a smaller device. Uh, so this is required to be an SVG asset. Moving on, we have the glance preview toggle. Uh, some devices have a concept of glance folders, which allows placing multiple glances in a single folder. So if your application has multiple complications, you can indicate which one you want to show up at the top level uh, when they're in a folder. This will be used by face it when a user is selecting complications to place on uh, their watch face when they're building it in the mobile app. Uh, this will describe your complication so they know what it is. Uh, finally, we have an optional range uh, parameter here. Um, some metrics, like for example, VO2 max or heart rate zones have ranges of values that have meaning to a user. Um, this allows a publisher to indicate these ranges so subscribers can consume that data and maybe recolor different zones or uh, change the font size to a different, uh, maybe a warning message if something's out of a standard band. Um, but th this is an optional uh, piece of data that subscribers will be able to see for your complication. So now that we've created our complication in our resources folder, let's take a look at how to actually update it. Um, when you want to update your complication, you, all you need to do is create this dictionary of data uh, with the value, label, units, and optionally some ranges, and then call update complication with the ID of your complication and passing in the data. Uh, this code can be run from either the foreground or the background. Uh, it probably makes sense to have a temporal event firing periodically uh, to get the newest value, calculate the newest value, and then publish that to the complications framework. Um, taking a look at the, the actual data values here, for value, this can be a string number. Uh, it can be a null value if you, if you have no most recent value there to show. Um, the label, we've discussed that, how it's going to be displayed. The short label is really helpful if a watch face actually wants to display a label instead of just the icon. Um, and then the units, uh, which I'll go into a little bit more detail here. This units uh, piece of data indicates your intended units. Um, so we have provided uh, an enum in the API uh, that has a few default values for these uh, pieces of data here, so a percent uh, is, will be in obviously a percent. Uh, speed, that means if you declare that you are passing speed, this will be in meters per second. Um, this allows Faceit or other applications, uh, other watch faces to know that the data coming in is in meters per second and potentially translate that into whatever setting the user has on their watch. Uh, distance, meters, 
uh, and so on. If you don't want to declare one of those cust uh, pre um, predefined ones, you can declare any custom string as your units. Uh, face it will display that as is, um, and any watch faces will know what you intended that unit to be. So should be not that complicated, right? We've taken a look at what it takes to subscribe, what it takes to publish. Um, in summary, we really hope that you enjoy this great generic one-stop shop for all these great metrics across the entire system. As Garmin innovates and adds new capabilities to devices and adds new metrics, they will be easily findable using the complications iterator and hopefully easily implementable into your watch faces. Um, we're really, really excited about the shareability of this feature, and we hope that our developers come up with some great metrics and publish them to the complications framework so that we can add those to our watch faces and really customize an important piece of our everyday wear. Thank you all for attending. My name is Jeff. We hope you like, publish, and subscribe.